Ladies and gentlemen, may I have your attention, please? So the first question of today's podcast really is Diego. Does he still, does he go? So, 7-0 and, uh, yeah, Callum Rowe and Nimeth both getting on the score sheet. Absolute cracking stuff. Any Rugs UK. All things revolution from a UK perspective. Hello everybody, I am Mike and welcome back to the Any Revs UK podcast, all things revolution from the UK perspective. And uh, thank you guys so much for the warm welcome back to the, the podcast era. And uh, yeah, this one, I'm going to start this off by just being very transparent with you guys. I'm actually recording this, I, I will be dropping on Monday, however, it's now only Thursday. So uh, there could be some news coming out of the Revolution camp, transfers and all that kind of stuff, which I might miss, but this is the only available chance I've got of doing this. At the moment, so I thought I'd uh, take this opportunity to get it done. Uh, although there's not actually any massive news, as well, there is some massive news, but there's not any. You know, there's not a lot of news out there at the moment. But I thought, you know what, I'm going to take this opportunity while I've got it to get an episode recorded. So I do apologise if come Monday you're thinking, Mike, what the hell, you didn't mention a lot of points here that's just happened in the last few days. Uh, but, you know, it hasn't happened for me yet, so I, I can't report it, can I? So, what is going on in the Revolution camp? Well, to be fair, let's start off with the first question. Diego, should he stay or should he go? So, as many of you, uh, if not all of you have seen, Diego Fernandez is in a little bit of battle at the moment. And there is uh, multiple reports coming out. I'm I'm tending to believe Sean Sweeney above anyone else because uh, the man spoke to him (laughs) directly, got some quotes from from Diego. So, it seems like that potentially, I'm not saying that he didn't want you know, in his head, he may want to move away from New England, but he's not, from from his point of view, he's not come out and actually said to to Brad or anyone on the team that, you know, look, move me on, I I want out, kind of thing, you know. He said that I've got a year left on my contract with, uh, you know, they could trigger on an extra year from from there on out. Um, So it doesn't look like it's going to happen. And also from the point of view of, it, it makes no sense from a, from anyone's point of view, re- really, for I mean, the only team that works out in any favourable conditions from this is is National, because they want to loan Diego from us, but they don't want to pay any of his wages because they can't. So there's no transfer fee involved because they can't afford to buy him. And then also on top of that, they they don't want to pay his wages. They basically want to have the player for us for free for a whole season with an option potentially to buy him at the end of that season. Even though they've got no money, they want us to pay his wages. And I, I, I just think it, it's it's a lose-lose for, for, for... Well, no, it's probably a win-lose. It's probably a lose for, for us. It's probably a win for Diego, potentially, if he does desperately want to leave New England. Um, but from a business point of view, as I said, I just don't understand it. It, it makes absolutely no sense. Even it's okay. Well, we're going to start talking about obviously. You know, there's been loads of rumors I mentioned on the on the first podcast. So Bojan and Carlos Hill. If, if either of those, or if both of those come into the team, so let's take the the best case scenario here. You know, uh, Carlos Hill comes in on a tam, and we get uh, Bojan as DP. Great. You know, everyone is probably going to be loving that. If that happens, you know, that's very exciting times at the at the Revolution, for sure. But that for me, that still doesn't mean we don't need Diego. If anything, that's going to drive Diego more to become the player that, that potentially he could be. If those two come in and we keep Diego, we could see a very improved Diego. So much so that, that Brad has to rethink, reshuffle to, to fit in his, his you know two big signings. Because if Diego all of a sudden ups his levels and you know we're looking to maybe play probably Bojan out on the right and Diego is is opting for that point or even at the number 10 spot, I can't, although it's not ideal for me. And all of a sudden, Jago's up in his game, and and Brad's got a bit of a headache. Then, which is great. That's what we want Brad to have. We want Brad to be thinking, come game day, you know, I don't know. Every position should be challenging for. He should be there thinking, you know, okay, well, you know, we've got this player in. He's he's you know he started last game. He had an okay game, but you know, training week, the young lads come in. He's 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 had a you know a good training session. He looks more up for it. You know, maybe we give him a shot this this weekend. You know, that's what we want. We want every single position to have two players vying for that position. So that's why I'm hoping that the likes of Renix, Aiken, Firmino, uh, you know, um, Buchanan, Jones, they're all going to be hopefully pushing them players. That they're all 
you know, players who could be pushing on. So even worst case scenario, we don't sign a, a DP player. We don't sign Heel or Mpoko or, or um, Bojan. It's it's not. I mentioned it before. You know, we're not going to be a club that's going to attract a Wayne Rooney. You know, a Wayne Rooney probably isn't going to want to come to to New England. One, the pitch. Two, it's cold. Although to fair, England's pretty cold as well. But you know, it's although you know Boston has got quite a decent draw to it. I think the fact that the club still plays not in their own ground, and it's just a kind of you know quite a lot of, of of different. You know, it's 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 a big it's a big change for 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 a player, I suppose, in a way. And I just don't think the New England's got that pull, unfortunately. Which I hate saying. I hate saying it, but it's true. It's true. It's damn true. Uh, but um, so yeah. So them kind of players aren't going to come. So yes, you know the likes of of Bojan and Carlos Hill may may come over to New England, which which should be great. You know they are very talented players within their rights. But why don't we just develop our own talent? We've got them there. We've got some very exciting youth prospects in our roster at the moment. So we, I just hope to God I pray that Brad utilizes them at some point this season. And hopefully, you know, one of them could even break out and become a starter. You know, I know it's a long, a long shot, but hopefully, one of them does stake their name for a place and is, you know, on that starting eleven for a good chunk of period of this, of this season. And that would be the most exciting thing for me. It won't be the emergence of Bojan or our, you know, our, our, our big name signing. It's going to be an emergence of one of them young lads coming into the team and making it their own, making their position their own. Uh, so kind of that's kind of that little bit of rant done and dusted but I kind of do want to talk to you about a few more things as well and that's the kind of whole Brad, Brad Friedel thing and, and, and what, what we're kind of thinking on Brad at the moment and what this season kind of I suppose holds for us now obviously you know Brad had a very very solid start to the, the first season very very good indeed to be fair I think we're you know I, I'd find it hard but done by to anyone to say any otherwise you know I think we he had a did a really really good job and uh Caught a lot of teams by surprise with, you know, how attacking we we were, put you know pressing from the front, uh, chasing players down, chasing lost balls, and and just really going for it, going for the win every single game. We got found out, obviously, you know, fairly quickly about what seven eight games into the season, obviously barring any red cards and disciplinary actions and all that kind of rubbish that happened. But yeah, we got we got found out, and then we kind of just didn't really kick on from there. We didn't really know what to do. It worked against some teams where there may be. Um, you know they weren't fully understanding of what what Brad's philosophy was, but other than that, it was we were pretty found out, and and we just there was no reaction. We were very, uh, you know, we weren't we weren't proactive at all in in anything. It just seemed like Brad was just going no same, <laughs> same 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 game plan. It's gonna work. It will work. Um, which you know. I get, I suppose, you know, you want you want your own identity as a club. But we've got to kind of have that, you know, turn to lines. I, I play football manager loads. And I know one tactic and one mentality and one, uh, you know, one set default tactic isn't going to win you the season. It's not unless you find a game-breaking one. But it's not because you, you'll get your scout report in from your scout. You'll assess it and you'll think, no, that formation and that mentality and stuff isn't going to work this much. I realise I'm turning into Bradford now. I've said mentality about three times. Um, but it's just not going to work for this game. So you rejig. You, you rejig. That's why you have a, a roster. That's why sometimes, you know, you might not have a place for Bojan if Bojan does come in. You might not be playing a right attacking midfielder. You might be playing a flat 4-4-2. And you might think that somebody else will do a better job as more defensively we might, be, we might you know when we come up against Atlanta I don't I think we should be a counter pressing team we shouldn't be an, a from the front we should still be a pressing team but I don't think we should be a, a pressing from as high up um, I, you know basically they can't damage us until they're kind of in our half so I think against a team like Atlanta we should keep really really tight on our men not let them have any space whatsoever so not stretch ourselves the fact that we're we're you know the, the forward line is, is pushing up because they're pressing so high up, leaves gap in midfield. They've got very creative players. You don't want them to have any space. You sit back, we look to hit them on the break. We've got some very fast players in the team, now, especially now more than ever. Utilise that. We, we, it, it just seemed like he seemed to want to play against you know the teams who are good footballing teams the same way we play against teams that aren't so good. Whereas that, that tactic will work against a team which... You know, is a little bit more open, and you know, haven't got as creative players. But if you give some of the Atlanta United players, I don't want to keep harping about a good Atlanta United are, but they just are. 
this, this, you can't really deny it. You know, they are a very, very good team. But if you start giving some of their players some space where we're pressing, you know, we've got our, our front four kind of up, then we've got a bit of gap and there's, you know, Caldwell and Casado sitting in, in between the, the line of the defence. They've got four players there sitting just waiting for the ball. They play a ball over to them. There's loads of space for them between the, the front lines to get back to track back and try and defend. It just doesn't work for me in, in that incidence. Where it's against a team like that, if we just sit back a little bit, don't press them until we get inside our, our own half, and squeeze no space, give them no space to work on the ball. That's how I think you do it. And then we break. We break. They're going to be coming forward. They want to score. They, you know, they're, they're the team that's the attacker. Um, you need to know how to park the bus. We need to learn how to how to see games out against teams who are just going to attack us. It isn't a basketball match. We can't just attack, you know, try and keep going back and forth. Because unfortunately, at the moment, and I'm, I'm going to be brutally honest here, we don't have the talent. We've got some very promising players, some very players who I think are potentially good enough to be that good, that aren't playing in the right system, uh, that sometimes aren't being given an opportunity as well. So it, it's there's a lot there's a lot of work to be done, and I kind of hope I'm praying to God, and, and I'm sure he will. But I hope that Brad's learned a lot from that first season more than anyone else at the whole club. I'm hoping he took a lot away from this, and he's gone back and and. Come, obviously, training camp started now. I'm hoping they're working on three or four different scenarios of of, of different teams to play against because that's what we need here. That that's what the, that's what I think we missed out of anything else. Of, even if you've not got the most talented players, if you get the mentality, oh god, my god stop saying mentality. If you get the the tactics spot on for that game day against, and we've seen it, ha- you've seen it happen. You've seen lower league teams. In the FA Cup, I don't know how many of you watch English football, but I've seen plenty of lower league teams get do their homework, do it spot on, just shut the team out, just hold it back, and they've caught them on the counter two or three times, and if they score one of those goals and then manage to keep it at the other end, they've won the match. It might not be pretty, but at the end of the day, if we get a playoff spot, uh, I, think that's, I think more Revolution fans will be happy with grinding out the results and maybe not playing the most prettiest game of football, and getting into the playoffs rather than another season of disappointment. Where yeah, we played good bits of football. You know, we, we you can't you can't knock knock the you know we played we played good football. I I put out a tweet the other day actually saying that uh, I'm going to go on record now and say that uh, I would be happy if the Revolution didn't make the playoffs if every single time we got on that pitch, every single player gave their all. If I if we can see that they're they're trying their hardest. And we're giving it our all, and we've 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 gone in, we've we've done our homework, we've done our research, we've we've named the starting eleven, you know, the correct starting eleven. We've played the right tactics in the day, and they were just the better team. It, it just comes down to they were the better team. Then I think you've got more kind of leverage going into Mike Burns and saying, look, we just had a pretty impressive season. Look, social media is going crazy. All the fans are saying that you know, you know, we've had a, a great season in terms of of attitude and and playing for the shirt. But the quality is lacking. So with one or two quality pieces in here, that, that's the make or break between us making the playoffs and not. I think he's got a lot more to kind of... That's kind of why I hate it when I kind of... Although I'm quite negative sometimes, but not very much to be found. I'm generally a positive person. But I don't like it when you see a lot of negativity around the revolution. So I'm thinking that's not going to be good for us in terms of... I don't, I don't think it does make that much difference, to be totally honest. I don't think Bradford will go to and shows him all the tweets and goes, look at all this. But I'm thinking if we had a massively positive end of season, you know, the lads gave it their all. That was a very impressive season. It just goes to show, you know, lack of quality is the, is the, the only thing we're, we're lacking there. Um, everything else was spot on for the season. That might hold a little bit of weight if a lot of people are reporting it and saying it. I'm not too sure, to be fair. But uh, who knows? But yeah, there's not really much else. I mean, it's pretty much just an episode of me ranting, got to be perfectly honest. But there's not really that much else to, to report at the time of recording this. So um, yeah, I do apologise. So it's mostly just been about Diego. Um, I think the Mpoko transfer, I don't think that's happening. There's not really been anything mentioned that. The Bojan one, I think that one's got legs. And I think the Carlos here one potentially, it would be really good if we got both. I'd be happy with one, to be fair. But if we got both, then... Yeah, that, this could be interesting, um, but who who knows what's going to happen with that one? Uh, no real other news other you know other than that. You know, we've seen pe- people come in. There's been you know obviously this Christian Panier has got a a personal matter at the moment. I'm hoping that is all it is. It's just a personal matter, and if it is, then obviously um, you know hope whatever's happening in his personal life is is sorted very very soon, and all is okay with him. 
but if not then yeah i just we just i mean the whole Diego thing just brought back memories of lee win straight away and then christian panier not reporting for the first day of training was like oh no that you, we can't lose those two <laughs> like no just we definitely cannot lose those two like christian Pinier's just signed what so hopefully, uh, as I said, it is the personal. Well, I don't want it to hopefully be the personal matter. But from a, from a selfish revolution fans' point of view, I do want it to be that. And as I said, if it is anything too, you know, obviously, you know, my thoughts with obviously Christian, if it's anything too serious. But uh, yeah, it's it it is actually weirdly enough, it's quite. I, as I said last time, it's it's I, I as a revolution fan, it's and even being so far away, it is an exciting time to be a revolution fan. I feel at the moment. I feel, especially if we if we get one of those players, I'll be I'll be happy if we get both of them. Will be ecstatic, uh, but even if we don't, I don't think that's the end of the season. I've seen a few people a little bit negative already. Not many though, which is good because we haven't even started. We've not even kicked a ball yet, so how can you be negative about it? But um, but yeah, there's uh hopefully a lot more news come out of the Revolution Camp shortly. But that's at the time of recording this, there's just nothing else for me to report on. So I'm probably going to try to wrap this one up today, guys. So it's not, not the longest one, but not the, the uh, shortest one either. If you have enjoyed it, then don't forget to share it around, like, subscribe, follow. I don't know where you're listening to it, all that kind of good stuff. And uh, I'll catch you, maybe not next Monday, but uh, possibly the Monday after for the next one.